Hello and welcome to the Rollers and the Rockers podcast. My name is Hayley Miller and I'm joined by my one-of-a-kind teammate. I think that was what we said last week, but that's okay because you're still one-of-a-kind. Emma O'Driscoll, welcome. Beauty, great intro by the way. Your voice sounds incredible today. It must be because you lack tape. <laughs> no, I have a drink just, just before we go um, live every live, not live, whatever. Um, before we record and my water bottle, this happened last week and I forgot to mention it, so I'm so glad you did, so people aren't just like, what's going on there? No, she I'm not a water it. bottle, don't worry. <laughs> not um, that's the reason she's been out. Yeah, <laughs> actually, <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> I can't hide it anymore. No. <laughs> no, just kidding. No, no, I'm so glad though, because usually that stuff happens to me, so I'm glad that you've had a mare two weeks in a row now. Um, but the intro was incredible. Thank I you. actually also wore pink today because of our particular guest. Particular? Yeah. Is that right? Partic- yeah, the particular oh, guest. Oh, God, thank God. I'm like having a bed. I see you projected. Wow. Um, I wore pink, though, because of because our guest today. Yes. So I'm going to let you introduce right. her so we can get into it. Let's do it. So she was drafted in 2020 um, to the Fremantle Dockers. Is it known recently to have uh, the most drip in the team. Yes. You know, I wasn't too sure what that meant, but... Maybe she does more so. Um, and three weeks ago, it made her return to the field after a massive 973 days. Can't wait to dive into that in a minute, but Michaela Morrison, Morrow, welcome to the podcast. Thanks. I'm very happy to be here. Finally. No, I know. Well, she well, said just, finally. I know. We've just figured out that. So I thought you were on three years ago, but it turns out, horrible turn of events, that... We I plan, we planned it all, and then we'll, you tell us what happened. First, the one so, the one about turbo. Yep. So the first one, this was back 2022, the first season. Um, this would have been not long after my debut, and yeah, the week I was planning on. That's when we thought turbo did her ACL. And we're all very down and out. We're like, nah, stuff that we're not doing anything. Yeah. Um. So then that got moved back to the week after, and then. The week after, I ended up doing my actual ACL. Honestly. So we're like, definitely not doing anything. <laughs> yes, we were not doing anything. <laughs> um, and then last year we went to do it. Um, yeah, it was around this time last year during Indigenous round. But I was in Kalgoorlie on my way back. So then like, yeah, you didn't make it back. Yes. And then didn't this make it back year, I wanted to get Mara on and she had work and literally couldn't get here on that day so then I said don't worry we'll get you in two weeks time it had been two weeks and Mara literally messaged me going Drisk am I on the podcast I'm "I'm so sorry you're actually not this week but we'll get you next week but the best thing about this though is that we can actually go through your whole story we're gonna gonna delve into your whole entire (laughs) life story don't you worry (laughs) our next segment is that's hard to say next segment next segment next (laughs) Yeah, easy. <laughs> Our next segment is the Anchors in Action, where we highlight um, unsung heroes around the club for things that they do that people may not see. Hey, put on your Superman case. It's Wolfie time. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. do you have someone in mind? Well, I have not thought of one yet. Or just her. Hmm, I have. I'm not just saying this because I'm close with her, but I'm saying Holly Eichold. It's not that. Um, I just think all pre-season, all season, um, despite her injuries and her setbacks, like she's just freaking amazing. Like even in the non-playing player session, she's so loud, puts in so much effort and yeah, always gets around the girls. And she actually lost her voice after the derby. She was screaming that loud. I was in between Miller and her. Oh. No. <laughs> but no, yeah, special shout out to Holly. And I think Holly as well, just like, Real, like Bing's, uh, see, you've, 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 it's contagious. Brings that big energy, but also I just feel like she's so much about celebrating others. She actually bakes cakes for everyone's birthdays as well. So I think that's just like such a small thing, but I feel like it means so much to that individual and then us as a collective as well. So we love your holes. I actually do have one. Okay, go. 
Um, speaking of birthdays, um, I'm going to shout out Claire Heffernan, who is our head of AFLW. Um, God bless your heifer. I call her heifer like the cow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've started calling her heifer. I don't know if she likes that. No, I don't know. But she certainly isn't a cow. She's an incredible human being and we love all she does for the program. I feel like she is just so selfless in all she does. She's always wanting to build a connection with us as well, which I think is so important in her role because then she can actually pass on that feedback and make the changes that we need to happen. So just all the work you put in, Hef, you live away from your wife um, and I just can't even imagine how hard that is for you. Um, and we've just become like your family, um, but we just love you. That's absolutely gorgeous. I've got a, a bit of a road one because it wasn't even our home game, but my shout out, shout, oh my God, I haven't been there. My shout out is, um, well, to the events team, but yeah. um, so on the weekend, I brought, like, after the games, wanted to get amongst it, had my, like, puffer jacket and my um, water bottle and brought that down. And then I put it on top of the footies that were going out onto the ground for you girls to sign and whatnot. And they're like, we can't put them there. And I was like, okay, we'll just put them on the ground. And then um, Kel was like, oh, no, we can't have that. You can't put it on the ground. So she's gone and given it to Amy, who was sitting, as in Amy from, like, works at Frio, but wasn't working on the day. Gave it to her to hold on to. And I was like, no, that's not right. I was like, so these poor... Ladies, she's not even working, no, but incredible. she had to hold my jacket and my water bottle um, because, God forbid, you put that on the ground. So, shout out to our events team, but also for everything that they do on our Great. game day. So, Liv and Kel, in particular, um, always on the headsets, making yep. sure everything runs super smoothly. Um, they are incredible um, at their job and, yeah, absolutely love what they do. So, we have got our From the Fan segment. Um, first up, we'll have Shaggy. <laughs> Hey team, Shaggy here. Congrats on a great season so far. My question is about how you wind down after a game. I play pretty low level park cricket, but find I tend to feel really drained and lethargic the next day. As professional athletes, what is your number one go-to when it comes to post-match recovery? Go Frio. It's actually a great question. Yeah, because I don't do it very well. Yeah, yeah it's, terrible. it's so hard. Especially night game. The one that sticks mm. in my head is the Geelong game. Oh, no, just no. Got no, I don't even I don't even know if I, if I should say how little sleep. And I am such a, like I'm not a great sleeper as it is, but I'm like a real committer. I will lay there in the dark with nothing. Like I don't like once I've done my first, like I, I'll do my reading, but then once I put the book away and like don't get it back out, I'll lay there no. for hours and hours and hours and hours. And I'm like, I won't look at my phone because I don't want to know what the time is, but I will lay there for an insane amount of time, which I feel like is not helping me. No. Just with your eyes closed or eyes Yep. Oh, yes. Eyes <laughs> closed. I'm like, come on. No. no. <laughs> just go to sleep, sleep, but sleep, so sleep. So they're thinking about it too much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so, so just because anyway, that, that, you, that was because the Geelong game was at 7pm at night. Yeah. And you haven't read Bull before the game. Like, didn't yeah. all the caffeine. So it was honestly, that was the worst. But yeah. normally there is like, obviously a bit more time between yeah. when you finish and um, so what do you, you do in that time and what other strategies do you do to wind down, whether that's that night or even the next day? Yeah, so that night, um, it's always still a little bit difficult, but keeping to my routine. So every night I will read my book before I go to bed so that that's the time away from your phone, reading your book. Um, and generally that will start getting me um, ready for sleep, take some melatonin, which is also like a nice. natural one, um, to help you prepare your body um, for sleep. And generally that works um, pretty well. Um, but yeah, like it's for me, sleep's a tough one yeah. as it is. So, but it is so important. Mm-hmm. So, I'm often I can't fall asleep, but once I fall asleep, I'm okay. okay. So then I sleep in as long as I possibly can, no alarms. Um, yep. like the day after, and try and sleep in as long as I can, and then nap. Yeah. So for the next day to make up for some sleep. Love it, Laura. What do you do? Hmm, well, I'm still trying to find my routine again. Um, mm-hmm. after so long, but I think. Yeah, I don't know, like, as soon as I get home, have a proper shower, because I feel like at the club, yeah, it's not yeah, a yeah. proper one. Yeah. yeah. Um, wash my hair, and then, yeah, just, like, lay down, watch my comfort show, Vampire Rose. Um, <laughs> love that. Um, and then, yeah, like, literally just try to do nothing at all. Yeah. Just Actually, that helped me one time. The most was just watching show. a show, mm-hmm. and then watch it until you get tired. And Mine. that might be, like, midnight or whatever, yeah. but, like, until you're, like, I'm actually tired, because, mm-hmm. yeah, when you... <laughs> Go to bed at nine like you normally wouldn't, then you're yes. like, I'm not ready yet. Yeah. You, you're I definitely struggle. 
to wind down from a game. Um, however, I have just learned to not put a time frame on it. Just like you said, Miller, whether it's midnight, whatever, don't put a time frame on it. And I'm big on putting a movie on after. The shower actually helps. Having a cold shower prior to bed actually helps because I don't know what it is, but it like shocks your system um, to the point where you then feel tired. So I think for me that's been huge. But also I just like distraction. So I'm not one to watch the game after the game because I've played it 75 times yeah. in my head. Um, so I'm one to just like completely switch off, whether that is like calling my friends or family, whether that's like playing, a, I don't know, you know, or whatever, like playing a game, just doing something completely different and mind numbing for me and then not worrying about how much sleep I'll get that night. Cause like you said, Hey, you can catch up the next day. Yeah. I then like the next morning to go for a nice walk, like super gentle, or I just get in the car and get straight to the beach and have an acai bowl. Ah. Yeah, so I think stuff that's not footy related is yeah. good for me. Love it. Next up, we've got Amy. I know that Drisco is a pro might fan. We've had a chat about that before. Um, but I'm very curious to know what everyone else's preferences are in terms of condiments and spreads. Bit of a random one, bit of a weird one, but so am I. So there you have it. Love the pod. I frothed that question. Pro might. I love pro might. What's pro I've never had it in my life. You freaks! <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like is that like an Audi version of no, 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 no. You know I get weird about my no's when I'm passionate. <laughs> um, Vegemite absolutely sucks. <gasps> you can clip that prize and put it on the Instagram. Vegemite <laughs> sucks. Promite slaps. Everyone needs to get what's the difference? It. it is I don't know. They, they look like very similar jars, but you need to buy and taste Promite. I just find Vegemite's got a very bitter taste, which you guys would obviously know. Promite's a little bit sweeter, like I find not like sweet, like jam sweet, but just like the taste of it's different. It's still a savory spread, but it's like a different version of, of Vegemite. And anyways, it's great with real butter on toast, of course. Um, but yeah, you should try Promite, guys. But what are your go-to spreads? Definitely Vegemite, butter and Vegemite. Oh. Yeah, but like sponge tan. Yeah, I'm pretty basic. What about if you're going sweet? Strawberry jam. Strawberry jam. So yeah, I just don't really have toast with anything but avocado. Oh like, yeah, nice. Does that count as a spread? You no. can mix it up. <laughs> no, <it's a> spread. <laughs> um, so well, sometimes though, like, when like I'm trying to not cramp, I'll have Vegemite yeah, underneath nice. the for um, the salt. Yeah, because it's super, super salty. But say if I'm having a crumpet, I don't know if you... I've been on the crumpet yeah, train crumpet. lately. Mm, it's honey. so good. Yeah. Honey. Honey. That's what I was going to say. Honey on a crumpet <laughs> is... It's not, best. I'm telling you, it's not in the honey. It's in real butter. <laughs> I'm telling you. I, I'm a woman that could eat sticks of butter for a living. And it is in the butter. You need to have real butter. What is this stupid olive extract <laughs> butters? Are you saying like a spreadable one? You but, can. Or like a stick butter. Either, either. But it just needs to be real butter as opposed to your margarines and your olive yeah. leaf spread, your nut right. legs. Get rid of that, get real butter and then your honey and then it just seeps through, you know, you oh, know the drill. Exactly. Oh, 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 I'm salivating. <laughs> I think I might Sorry. actually talk for Megs about getting some crumpets in the Yes, I would love that. I swear we used to have some. Yeah. Unless you need to check them in that. Because you can freeze them, just put them in the freezer, and it's so easy to then okay, throw it back up. Well, I'm going to tell her that I asked a room full of people, hand up and give crumpets. Yeah, Great. Okay, perfect. Now, next up, we have three from Juddy, which I'm actually dreading. Oh, Morrow, you need to dread more, I reckon. Um, so let's just hear the first one from Juddy. Question for Morrow on the potty tomorrow is what was her favourite goal that she's ever scored in an AFLW match? It better involve me. <laughs> Morrow, she tells oh, us that's a, loaded, goal it's a loaded question. All the time. So you need to go play by play. Tell us about this. And if it's not your favourite, we want to hear your favourite. But I also want to hear yeah, that. It's my favourite. It has to be my favourite. Um, yeah, so this was in my, what, third game back? First home game. Um, oh <laughs> um, so, yeah, we were versing Carlton. Mm -hmm. I think this was my second goal of the day. She, we, day. Yeah, she did. Oh, fuck. We, oh, it was an open 50. Jaddy was on the edge. <laughs> Edge, the whatever the edge of the 50 is called, oh, I don't know. Yeah. And then, so the ball was coming in, I was just on the side, and then she could have marked it. Anyone else would have marked it, but of course, Juddie, she's smarter than that. She taps it, I don't know how she saw me at the back, 
She taps it back and then I get it so clean and then obviously through the big sticks. But that was all thanks to Jenny and I will say that is my favourite girl. No, it's actually the best thing ever because you know what I love about this story? Every time now in the men's AFL that mm. something, the slight, like the slightest bit like that where it's like a tat on, <laughs> Maura and Johnny just send it to each other going, oh, don't worry, I'll be better. Well, it's true. It's, oh, it's, my God. No, I so you, you literally send each other videos of what happens in the men's going, oh, our connection's better than that. Like, yeah, we're going to pull up the footage of that as mm. well. That's was that the one where you sold candy or a different one? No, it must just, be. Was like was right out. Yeah, that was right out. No, well, the one you sold candy on was pretty good. Yeah. That's the one they like to show in the highlights. But, no, of course. Let's show the highlights better. Show more. The tap from Jodie. Thanks, Kaz. Thanks, um, Johnson. Also, the one thing I love about Jodie's voice messages that we just played for these ones, she keeps saying, like, a question for the panel. What? <laughs> what? We're not. <laughs> We're on the panel. Uh, another one for the panel. If your life had a theme song that played every time you entered a room, what would the song be? The panel. Oh, I need a um, no. prior warning for these. It's actually a great question, though. Mm. Maura, yours has to be Barbie. I knew you'd say that. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah. yeah. I think ever since last year. Ever since, since we, did, we did this video and it just was so you. It was the most new yeah, thing I've ever seen. But also, any other songs that you can think of, you can. Hmm. Well, do you have one? How about you? Yeah, you two go first. I have one for me. Okay, go. What's yours for you? <laughs> what are you thinking? Wait, of? wait. It's gonna be whatever you. I can't remember <laughs> what you're obsessed with at the moment. Right, so but it's actually not, not Charlie XCX. Um, I think I want that to be more. <laughs> Butter, energy. <laughs> or also, or Johnny was thinking like when I asked her this because we were talking about it. And she was like, "What about big, big energy? That'd be kind of cool. Big yeah. energy could do that. Do you have big energy? But I think that is still the mom. Yeah, you know, that's fun. Yeah, I hate George Oh no, nah. no, nah. <laughs> bring in Black Betty. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> Black Betty and Hayley. Surely, and then, whoa, Black, Black Betty. <laughs> I came on in the um, gym the other day and I was like, I've not heard this song. <laughs> oh, really. oh, and he plays Woody as well. I just think, whoa, Black Betty. <laughs> <laughs> the Black Hair Daily and Black oh. Betty. Anyway, I want everyone to see who they say if they think that will soon. That's too good. Nah, I want to be that for yourself. Nah, that's cool. We can go with that. I don't have anything. Maura, yeah. do you have anything else? Do you, no, do do you like country? Mm, yeah, country. that's what I thought. Country. Is there any country song that you like? Hmm. Not off the top of my head. No, like it would have to be played every time you walked in the room. That's the only thing. Yeah. No, no, Stick with Barbie. They didn't look at my liked songs. Anyways, we'll listen to the last one from Johnny yeah. Panel. Another question for the panel. <laughs> <laughs> Who would play you in a movie and why? She's actually <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's too good. The first person that pops to my head for me is Jennifer Aniston. That's really cool. I see that. Because, like, similar hmm. blonde hair, all that. Oh, she's she's also ripped. not, like, she's not, like, she's not, like, funny funny, but she's, like, dry funny. Yeah, she but is. she's, like, that boss bitch. She is movies. boss. And I feel like. And she's that. ripped. She's that, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She can play me. <laughs> yeah. She can play me then. Okay. Oh, fine. So, so many similar. Oh, so many similar. <laughs> No, that's a great one. Like, yeah, that's a legend. And I love her too. She's great. Mm -hmm. I love her. Mara. Mm -hmm. I just love her doing your words. Not Beyonce. No, <laughs> what are you thinking? No, I'm not saying it now. Um, to play me. Yeah. Who are you thinking? No, no, I'm not saying. You need to say. Well, I always say Beyonce for everything, but to play me. You're thinking like Nikki Minaj. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, not. I'm like, how the hell? Hell? that Nikki is the receptionist in? Um, the other man? Oh, the other man. yeah. And I'm just like, <laughs> that's more. <laughs> like, <laughs> Nikki, you're just nailing this. Like, what the hell? I awesome. love Nikki, but I don't know. No, who would you actually? Anyone. <sighs> no, I'll suck at these questions. Um, you think I'll go no, mine? Yeah, you need to like. 
Correct. Mm. Okay, I know no one will know this one, but Asha Ketty is an Australian actress and she's Nina in Offspring. And yeah. I just oh, absolutely yeah. Yeah. love her. <laughs> like, I love her. She's incredible. Um, so I would want her to play me. It's gonna say, or I guess it, I guess I don't know what she I've only ever seen her in like bits of like offspring where she's not like you. She no, doesn't have the same, but, but she's an actress, so I just, of course she'd be able to do it. Yeah, of course she'd be able to do it. I feel like she's not like me. I don't know anyone like me. <laughs> <laughs> no. I guess okay. they, they don't have to be like you, they just have to be a good um, actress to be able to play you. Mm-hmm. Who else do I really like? Oh, I would want um, Rebel Wilson's intense oh, oh. yeah, Rebel Wilson would be funny. Oh, would Actually, be. I say that. She Come on, Fat yeah. Amy. Like, she's going to be Emma O'Driscoll in a movie. Love That's her. Good. Or do you know, um, have you seen Vampire Diaries? Yes. Uh, yeah. Do you know Caroline? Yeah. Whoever, I don't even know her real name, but whenever I watch, I actually do think of you. To really? be honest. Maybe it's just looks. Yeah. Mm. And she's very like. She's a woman, isn't she? Yeah. 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 I see that. I don't know my name. Anyways, who is yours? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, okay. Otherwise, she's no, really Nicki Minaj. No, no, no. I think I'll go with Jessica Rabbit. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, no. No, you're going to die at this. <laughs> Juddy literally said, Mara will say Jessica Malway. <laughs> well, do I have to? I think you have I to. love her. I'm, oh, my God. Legend. She's great. She's mm-hmm. a legend. When you did. Is that the first? That's not the first time you've met her. Was it the other week? First summer, that was the first time. Yeah. The other week. That the was like week. back in July. Yeah. Okay. The other week. Back in July. Let's get the picture up of Morrow and Jess Malboy. Yes. That's All right. Nice. Perfect. So now moving on to Morrow, we know who she wants to be. That's Jess Malboy. But <laughs> we actually want to ask her about her own life because it's incredible. So Morrow, uh, I want you to start from the very beginning, birth date and all, <clears throat> middle name and all. We need to hear everything about you. Um, where are you from? What's your story? Tell us everything. We will obviously dive into your culture if you're happy to talk about that because it's bloody amazing. But start where you want to start. And go. All right. Um, my full name, Michaela Grace Morrison. <laughs> yeah, good start. Um, yeah, I was born and raised in Perth. Um, I'm a Noongar Yamaji Gidja woman, so my mob come from pretty much all over WA. Um, but I have stronger connections to my Noongar mob, which is... The Perth region. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, growing up in Perth, I grew up in Lockridge. Not many people know where that is. Um, but yeah, and then from there, we I spent a lot of time in Kalgoorlie with my cousins, and then we also moved down to Bustleton um, so cool. just after my younger brother was born. So my younger brother Daniel, but we call him Baba. <laughs> um, he actually loves that. I don't know. I don't know. Does everyone else, is it just your family that calls you Bubba? Everyone calls you no, Bubba. I literally call him Bubba. Well, no, but I'm just, you know, like, does his friends. school friends call him Bubba? Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's why I'm like, is it, is it a family mm. thing and that's okay by him? But then his. Maybe his, his friends. closer friends. Yeah. But, yeah. I don't know. They actually might, though. Because mm. they, whenever they're around home, like, he's Bubba around home. So. Yeah. Unless they just make fun of him. But we don't care. He's, so he's Bubba for the rest of his yeah. life, no matter how old he is. Yeah. But, um, I literally got him tattooed on my thing as well. That's pretty much it. I spent most, like, all my life in Perth. Um, And then from there, I started working at my dad's work, Wanjini. Um, Wanjini Aboriginal Corporation. He does just a lot of work with Indigenous people in the community. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I had a few roles, just, like, in the prisons, in the women's refuge, um, and just, like, in the reception doing admin. Um, yeah, then 2020, got drafted to here. Um, yeah, so that I got drafted from Swan Districts. So I just played the one season there because East Perth didn't have a league team. Um, so, yeah, and then from there, do we just the footy stuff from there? Well, let's go back. When did you first start playing? Oh, sorry. All, yes. All together. No, but I love that you went through this yeah. and everything like that. That's, no, that's great. And the <laughs> fact that you moved around a heap as well, like Perth, Kagali, Busselton, um, Country Girl, we love that. That's why we have a connection. <laughs> wink, wink. Bella, no, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> and Maura calls me Bella. Um, no, so yeah, like H said, let's 
go through your footy journey now. So then when did you first start playing and then obviously how that led to Waffle W and then AFLW? Yeah. So I started playing footy in primary school, like just a little Dockers Cup that they would have there. Um, and then from there, I moved to Bassendine Junior Football Club, which I actually played with Tara Stripley. So good. We were in the same team. Um, I actually have a photo. I'll, I'll send it to you. Um, were you the two? Were you with the boys at this point? No, girls, girls. Just same. girls. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're young enough. Yeah, yeah, so. that when there was girls. Well, no, that was the last young. season. The last season that we could. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. yeah. Um, yeah, from there, I kind of stopped playing footy for a bit and went to netball and little athletics. Um, netball, I played up until 2018. Um, and then from then, oh, sorry, from then as well, I was playing at East Perth Royals. Um, and then 2018, I kind of had to make that choice if I'm going with netball or mm -hmm. footy. And I ended up choosing footy, obviously. Um, and then, yeah, from there, went from Swan Districts for the year 2020, got drafted from there, and then period of this since then. Did you always watch footy growing up? Was it part of your family growing up a lot? Yes, what definitely. What team did you go for? The other side of town. <laughs> okay, we've all, we've all been there. Yeah, we've yeah. all been there. I know we have seen him. Uh, uh, no, he is not anymore. He's actually not a member anymore, but uh, he had some trouble mm -hmm. making that. That cut, but anyway, they small. still they still go for um, the limbs. Um, well, not the women's. That's what Mum says as well. Yeah, fine. Yeah, but Dad was easy to convert. As soon as I got drafted here, it was like bang, all fair. Good, Daniel. We like that from you. That's brilliant. Mum's very stubborn. Yeah. Um. So, and so you, you so you represented um, WA um, state eighteens. Mm -hmm. Was that? Yep. So that was twenty nineteen. Um, Did you play with anyone? That so it was Stripley's in that Oh, thing. no, not Stripley's. Anyone else? Sezzy. Yeah. Who else? Hey, Sezzy. There was obviously, like, past players from here. Yeah. In, like, Roxy, Nikki. Oh, yeah, right. I feel like that. You, like sorry, you. Drisco. Yeah, I was like, I don't know I was there for one of the years. I think I was there. I think I was there for one of the years, boy. Yes, yes, sorry, you were there. No, that's great. Um... But then you represented WA way. and then you were drafted to Frio in 2020 at pick 30. Um, how was that day? Was it the best day of your life? Who came to your house? Oh, my God. So, yeah. So, Dad invited literally the whole family. Right. This, we had no idea I was getting picked. So, I was like, Dad, if I don't get picked, I'm going to be so angry. <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally inviting, like, both sides. Um, but, yeah, so everyone came over home. And then the whole day, like, I, I had to leave. Like, I was like, I need to go beach or something. Just to, like, no. oh, my God. Such so anxiety, stressful. literally. Um, and then, yeah, so we all sat outside with the TV and had a plane. Um, yeah, and then it got towards, um, obviously, we were just looking at Eagles and Freo, so it was just either, either. Yeah. Um, and then it got to the last couple of Freo, and we are just like, oh, my God, this is, this is happening. And then, yeah, obviously... There was me and then another Michaela as well. So I was like, if we just hear Michaela and then we don't hear the last name, just make sure you hear the full <laughs> name, <Yeah>. please. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, and then, yeah, everyone just went off. Like it was, yeah, probably one of the best days ever. Wow. Just having my whole family there as well. That's so good. And then your, because your first part into life as an AFLW player did not go so this has got nothing to do with the knee problems that you had but the first year didn't go the way that you would have liked it to go can you give us a little insight into that so you don't have to go into too much yes I know, I know. <laughs> um yes yeah, so we were probably halfway through pre-season I reckon towards the end mm -hmm. um and I started getting like really bad stomach pains like it was just really weird and this was happening for a few weeks and I was checking in with our doctor and our physios and whatever and I was like like I'm in pain and I was just like oh have some pain I was like okay and because it was my first year yeah. I'm just like oh I don't know what yeah, I'm doing yeah. mm. um and then I just kept training I was getting through just and then towards the end like I was just like no nah, like this isn't normal kind of thing and then I ended up going to the doctors going to the hospital and then got bloods done the first one I won't say the hospital because that's a weird thing, but they ended up misdiagnosing me. So then I went off, but then it got worse. So I ended up having 
an abscess next to my appendix, which pretty wow. much gave the same symptoms as appendicitis, yeah. So, yeah. which is what they thought it was. Um, so then I ended up in hospital, I think for about two weeks all up. I had to get a, like a tube and a drain into my stomach. Um, so they could drain pretty much all the abscess yeah. duckiness out. Um, so yeah, I was in hospital for I reckon a few days at first, went home, had like silver chain come over every second day to actually wild drain mm -hmm. it and whatever. Um, and the drain freaking stank, honestly. It was disgusting. No, I can't. <laughs> no, I can't that's gross. Crazy. <laughs> no, for real. Anyways, and then, um, yeah, so it was all going good. Like, And I was meant to have the drain in for like two weeks max. Yeah. And then I think it was in for about a week and then I was getting pain again and the drain wasn't flushing. Um, so then I had to get sent back to emergency. And then they pretty much just told me that the drain had like pierced my bowels. No. Nah. Oh no. So it's not good. <laughs> like what the hell? I know. It was just one thing after, after another. another. Oh. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, so obviously they couldn't remove it at that point, otherwise my bowels would just leak. Yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. That's even worse. It's not yeah. really good. Yeah. Um, so then I had to stay in for longer just so it could kind of heal. And actually um, wild, no. Yeah, so I ended up with it for six weeks. I don't think people would know the extent of this story. No. Either. Well, I remember you coming to training. Like, not training, obviously, but just, like, coming to say hi and you've got this drain. Mm. It's just, like, it, no. like, it just makes you go, wow, that's, like, that's yeah. full on. Yeah. So that obviously derailed your first um, season because you didn't get back to, obviously, playing your health came um, first and then... Um, yeah, then it was obviously 2021. Um, you, when did you, when did you say you? 22, the first season. First so season, 20, 2021 season. season. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, in your third game, you kicked three goals against Carlton. That was incredible. And you got a Rising Star nomination. Yes, you did. And then tell us, I mean, we're trying to beat around the Yeah, we know what happened after that. But I guess just want to hear about your ACL journey and then I suppose that just links in with how you then made this massive comeback, which is just a phenomenal um, story. So I guess just tell us about how you went through that ACL period and then the follow-up, I guess, hurdles that you also had to overcome, Laura, because it's truly inspiring. Um, and I guess how you then are where you are now. Yeah. Um... Well, yeah, I guess from the first one, I did my first one on my birthday, which I think was it's double whammy. I'm sorry, <laughs> that was your 20th birthday. 20th That's birthday. cool. 20th birthday. Mm -hmm. And not fair. Like, oh, nice. what the hell? Mm -hmm. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yes, that's not fair. That's very yes. sad. Um, A lot of this is not fair. Um, and, yeah, from there, I guess I think I wasn't really, like, aware of how big, the injury was because obviously the first time I hadn't really had any huge injuries before that um so I was just like oh like, okay like I'm gonna rehab like it's okay mm. um and I knew I had obviously heaps of support around me with the girls and in the club um so yeah I went through that one like pretty okay kind of thing yeah. and there weren't much setbacks in that first one great so it was just basically getting that rehab right strengthening the quad and then getting to running changing direction mm -hmm. all of that um, yeah, and then I guess coming back from that one, I had about two weeks full training. We were like just at the start of pre-season last year. Um, and yeah, it was one training. I was feeling really good that training and I felt this again in that first one as well. I was like, I'm feeling amazing. And then, yeah, I think that one, it was just, yeah, going up for a month. I did it the exact same way I did the first one. Um, but yeah, and then I always did my other ACL on the other side. Um, and yeah, as soon as I heard that snap, I knew mm. I did it straight away. So I was just tears the whole time. And then, yeah, but I guess from that one, that hit me way harder. Yep. And I felt like I really felt that. Um, so yeah, I ended up, so I was working at Cedar at the time as an Aboriginal Liaison Officer. And I ended up quitting, I think about two weeks after, mm -hmm. just because I was just really deep down in the dumps. Yeah, um, and I just knew during that time, like if I couldn't kind of, support myself there was no way I was supporting my kids there even though I love them to death and I love that job yeah of course um but yeah so I ended up resigning from there and then obviously just going through my rehab going through yeah the whole process um I knew what I had to do and then yeah it was pretty smooth at first I reckon like rehab wise like I was getting the strength I needed getting 
you know, hitting, ticking all the boxes, sorry. Um, and then, yeah, when it came to maybe the end of that rehab, that's when it started getting a bit tricky and I was kind of going through a bit more setbacks with that. So I ended up getting another two clean outs, yeah. so one on each side. Wow. Um, which obviously are nothing compared to the ACL surgery in itself. Um, but yeah, still again, a couple of weeks set back each time. But um, it's been such a lot, like you're, you're thinking this is two whole like 12 months, mm -hmm. um, you know, rehabs and then you put on top of that, even if it is a couple of weeks on that, you, I feel like, and look, correct me if I'm wrong, you're like, yeah, 12 months and now I'm going to be mm -hmm. good to go. And then anything that's going to start pushing that back even further, I'm sure that was mm -hmm. extremely yeah. Yeah, difficult. Yeah, yeah. I think both times I said to Brett straight away, I was like, what does this mean for my like, return? Like, in how many weeks? And like, I just drill in with questions. I'm sure he's glad I'm out of rehab. Um, but yeah, and I think the second one that hit me way worse because obviously it was, what, like two weeks out of round one Yeah. Um, when I was on track for round one and then like, because it was a bit of a bigger tear than the first one, sorry, the first clean out that I had, we were planning on either going the clean out or the full on repair. Yeah. yeah. And at that point, I was just like, like footy's not meant for me. Like I just, I just want to get my knee right. Yeah. Just, you know, for everyday stuff. Not, right. yeah, yeah, not for footy. Like I just want to have healthy knees kind of thing. So I was like, yeah, let's go through with the full repair. It's a huge decision. Yeah. So and then obviously I was like, I was like, I'm never playing footy again. Like stuff is. Um, and I'm sure Hef told you girls that as well. Like she, I was going through with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then when Pete opened me up, he was just like, no, we're going with the clean up. I was like, okay. It's actually <laughs> okay. Mm. And I what think that, yeah. yeah. What yeah. was that like? Because you obviously, you go into surgery thinking you, you're doing one mm -hmm. thing. You wake up and they say you've, like, you, you got something else, which means for your footy journey, because you're, you kind of, what you've alluded to is you were like, this is probably it. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, yeah, you were like, I don't think this is going to happen for me in terms of footy. And then you wake up and you're like, something different. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, hang on, that opens the door for footy again. Yeah. And I said, well, that, like, I didn't know that from, that you thought, you know, that was probably it for your footy and then now you've actually ended up coming back. How was that sort of process? Mm. Um, that's a big, that's a big switch in mm. mindset. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I kind of went in, like, with the mindset, I knew it could go either way, I kind of think, because yeah. I wouldn't, sorry, Pete wouldn't know what he's doing until he's yeah. seen um, inside, so I knew it could have gone either way. Yeah. Um, so I try to just think, obviously, once it's done, just obviously, just do what you can, just to get it right. Not Like, I didn't wasn't thinking about footy, wasn't thinking about when I was returning, it was just getting my knee right, yep. making yep. sure no pain, um, yeah, and just feeling good kind of thing. So I guess when, yeah, when I woke up, I, like, felt for a brace straight away, and then when I didn't feel the brace, I was like, oh, my God, do it with the cleaner. <laughs> um, and really then, cool. yeah, and then I was just like, okay. But then, obviously, it took a few days to process, and then, um, yeah, just I just took that rehab just week by week kind yeah. of thing, not mm -hmm. trying to worry about. But I think that's also incredible as well, like not focusing on time frames here because to be honest, like I don't know if us girls thought you would play this season and you probably had that in the back of your mind as well, Laura. And the fact that you were able to then just smash out this block of rehab without an expectation of getting back to play, you were then able to obviously come back against Geelong the other week, which is just an incredible journey and story and we were all so stoked that video is one that's going to stick in my mind of of us just getting around you finding out you were selected um i was on the blower to your mum literally saying you need to get to melbourne now she's just flown back to mm -hmm. perth mm -hmm. um talk us through that moment when you found out you were actually going back to play mm -hmm. um well yeah, i think leading up to that week i knew like i was cleared to play but then i obviously didn't want to get ahead of myself and i knew obviously I had to earn my spot in the team um but yeah i guess being at that captain's run um yeah towards the end of it i could see like webby talking to everyone that wasn't playing i was just like looking everywhere else trying to go to the other side of the oval but then i was just like no nah, like, it's fine like it, it you know obviously if it's meant to be it'll be so then we started getting back there and then once brett started talking i was just like this is a bit sus like why is brett talking <laughs> um but yeah and then yeah, as soon as they announced it, it was just like all so, tears and I just couldn't stop the tears. So, but yeah, it was very happy. No, it was amazing. Was there anyone in groups, because it's a very long journey, I'm sure there's a lot of people that um, had a big part in your journey. Is there any person or couple of people that 
were really pivotal in your rehab? Oh yeah, there were heaps. Um, well, definitely, obviously, to the medical team, um, that being Brett, KJ, um, Boris, Irony, um, and back then, obviously, Gabby and Tane. Um, yeah, like, I obviously could not have done it without them. Yeah. Um, yeah, they literally pushed me through right till the end. Um, and then, yeah, obviously, all my teammates, like, I said this in my interview after the first game, like, I could not have gone or made it this far without you guys. Um, and then, yeah, even, like, in my first rehab, Juddy, she literally yeah. did every single rehab run with me. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, pushed me to my freaking limits trying to keep up She's with actually her. Wild. She's a psycho. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I love her so much. She's freaking amazing. Um, but, yeah, just, yeah, obviously all the support around me. Yeah. Well, it's an incredible yeah. story. And then to, like... From someone from the outside, when you're just watching someone go through, there was nothing I wanted more yeah. than for you to play football again. So when, like, I'm sure watch yet yeah, for yourself as well, when we finally got that, like, I have tears in my eyes now thinking about it, when we get that news that you're going to play, is just like, incredible. thank God, because I'm sure there was times that you thought you were never going to play footy again, and then I'm just like, please let this girl mm. enjoy Playing. And I've always said that to you, like, when you've come back, is, like, just enjoy mm. being able to play for you again because it's been such a long time. So yeah, I'm so cool. proud of you for getting through that. And then whatever from here in terms of, like, if we're just enjoying the fact that you're out there, it's mm. awesome. It's amazing. I love it, Maura. Amazing story. Um, sorry to be abrupt but we are going to fly through this dish with drees now um this is the best part of the podcast but Maura, just feel free to i'm going to roast you so you just answer how you want um what is the main reason you hate training in the rain <laughs> my lashes these bloody eyelashes so anyone doesn't know Maura carols Maura, i can't speak Maura carries a spoolie around so that she can brush her eyelashes even though she's about to go out there and absolutely smash girls on the park. I've been pretty good recently, though. Normally I'd carry it in my sock, but that I is, haven't lately. I've been that's like, a fine. To carry a good. little baby brush in I your sock. I take credit if I haven't been doing that. To brush your lashes. <laughs> Anyways, um, another great one. Where do you get your coffee from in the morning? Normally, I don't know. I don't know what it's called, but the cafe next to my house. No, no. you don't. What are you talking about? Do you drive through? Most <laughs> Yeah. It's actually this ridiculous. Isn't all the time, though. But how embarrassing. <laughs> Why Muzz Buzz? I feel like Macca's drive through coffee is better than, than Muzz Buzz. Buzz. I don't know. Because like, you get a little I cookie like, on top. Yeah, I love it. It comes with a straw. No. And the ham and cheese. Muzz Buzz comes with a straw sometimes. Mm -hmm. It used to. They used to give you a straw oh. for your coffee. Because I remember my mum got one once and I was like, what the F? No, nah. you have a straw. Hot coffee. coffee. That's a, yeah, that's not right. You okay, I've never that. had that. No, oh, I'd never do that. But I'll go to Mazda. But I'll never do that. I've but no, I mostly go for the ham and cheese bagel. Have you had the ham and cheese? No, I haven't. Okay, so no, now I'm, I'm going to try that. that. Perfect. Never go to Mazda as a brother than the phone at home. Um, alrighty, biggest fear. What is your biggest fear? Because <laughs> I've got it written down here. Um, cows and horses. But right now, say you want to be a cow killer. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm gonna make that happen. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna make that happen. No, that's interesting. Um, alrighty. Now I've got a funny story here. So talk us through your pre-season with Springer. We obviously Springer is a great man in our club. He does boxing with us girls, and Mara obviously went through a really big stint where she wasn't on the track, so she was doing a heap of boxing with Springer. This pre-season, she's boxing with Springer on a Saturday. Now, Mara, you can continue the story when Springer proceeded to ask you what you were doing over the weekend. Oh my God, when was it happens to be that Morrow actually has told Springer that she's going to the library. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> this wasn't this crazy. Just for context, Springer's a 60 year old man. Yeah. <laughs> what was his response to? I'm going to the library. Yeah. So he was just like, oh, I don't even remember exactly what he said. It's he a Saturday night, like, oh, everyone. Yeah. yeah. He's like, oh, well, that's good. Like, what are you studying? <laughs> <laughs> what books are you going to read? <laughs> Mara's like, nah, actually, I'm going to the library and all the <laughs> So if anyone doesn't know, the library is a club. You know, 
<laughs> Poor Springer. No, but no, I love Lauren, it. Is That's yes, true. I love it then. <laughs> in the off season. <laughs> so that's where you can find Lauren in the off season at the library. Anyway, yeah. at the library. Not really don't books. ask her yet what she's studying. <laughs> um, and last but not least, you got your first tattoo at 16. How did you reveal this to your father? 16? 18. Your first one was at 16. Oh, okay. like, Nicola, like, stitch me up, Nicola. <laughs> okay, it must be. Hang on, your first. My mum said this. Well, she might have. She might have. Oh, well, I feel like Morrow would have a few speak. beverages before she wrote me this text. I feel like Morrow would know. Okay, <laughs> Morrow. I don't care what age it was. You got your <laughs> first tattoo. <laughs> How did you reveal this to your dad and why? Yes. Yeah, so this was. I got my tattoo twenty twenty, um, and this was the day I got drafted. I had hidden it from Dad up until then. It's been a few months. Mum knew I got it, had it because she paid for it. And then the day I got drafted, I was like, oh, Dad, look here. And then I obviously showed him the one of my ribs. And then he was, yeah. To soften the blow <laughs> because he showed her Dad on draft day. Because <laughs> he couldn't be mad at you because you just got drafted. That is exactly. perfect. <laughs> no, great. No, no, that's, that's, too, but that's incredible. Anyways, we're moving on. Mora is on as well because it's Indigenous round. We are so bloody excited to wear the jumpers. Tia Haynes, past player, yes. Tia Toff now, um, has designed these jumpers with her sister, who is the artist, which I just find incredible. Mora, you've previously designed an Indigenous jumper as well. Tell us what it means to you to not only design a jumper, but just be able to wear that jumper with so much pride and obviously have us represent your culture on field as well. Yeah, yeah, I think it's very special to have designed a jump for yourself um especially just yeah obviously in the club that you played in or for me for example i did it with my two uncles um uncle dj who was a past player so i guess yeah it's just having your story literally permanently mm -hmm. within the club um and having the players where it's just yeah a huge honor um but yeah for tia like yeah very happy for her obviously and i love the jumpers they're so beautiful especially with the willy wag tails um but yeah, it's just very exciting. And it's the last time game. Get around the fan zone. It's going to absolutely pop off. That's all we have time for this week on the Rollers and the Rockers podcast. Morrow, how'd you find it? Yeah. Well, she's just taking my line. <laughs> she's never said that line. I know. She's I'm just right, she's wrapping it up as quick as she can. My God. No, very good. Hey, thanks so much for being on. I'm so glad we finally got there. Yeah, thanks for having me. No, it's great. All right. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. And oh, as always... I'll leave you. I thought you were going to, like, say this part and I was going to have to come up with a quote, but off you go. What have you got? Well, you didn't finish the sentence. <laughs> oh, I'll let everyone know. And as always, I'll, I'll leave you <laughs> with Drisco to finish the pod with an inspiring quote. I mean, I do have... <laughs> okay. I've got a few here, actually. Just one will do. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Anything will do. I never feel more alone than when I'm trying to put sunscreen on my back. <laughs>